Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Alicia, and I am very excited to be joining you today. Now, if you'd like to participate as we do our exploring, you can text in with parents' permission. Just remember that you, you do need your parents' permission and that regular uh, texting rates do apply. If you would like to text us, we do have a number at 562 286 1838. If you're watching our program after we've already done it live, you can always email us at live at lbaop.org. So I'll put this up a couple more times during our program. You can text us in if you have answers to some of our questions. Um, if you have questions for us, that's what we're here for. Or if you have something that we missed that you would love to share, um, we would love for you to, to contact us. Also, for my explorers out there who are watching, you can always just shout out the answer. You can write it down. You can tell a family member. We're going to have fun today. So we're going to be exploring. Let's go ahead and start with one of our webcams. Now, I have a couple people who are here in our studio today. So Amanda, my friend Amanda, is exploring with us behind the scenes. And then I have my friend James, who's taking um, all of your questions today. Now, we're going to be exploring a lot of different animals that live in the ocean. Now, some of these animals are tiny. Some of them are big. Some of them are uh, different colors. And in fact, we're going to be exploring using our eyes today. And as we explore, I would like you to see if you notice anything interesting. So we're going to start again by exploring our colors. Then we're going to look at shapes. So as we're looking closely, see if you notice anything interesting. So let's go ahead and put our colors up here. What color should we start exploring with? I wonder, do you have a favorite color? Now, I bet you there are a lot of animals out there that are more than just one color, but we're going to pick a color and then we're going to play a little game as well. So our game will have puzzle pieces and an animal that hides behind each one of these puzzle pieces. And we'll see if we can kind of guess that. So I'm going to have my friend Amanda pick a color for me, any color. I like, I like almost all of them. All right, so our first color is blue. So the animal that we're going to be investigating, or the animals today, will be blue in color. And again, we're going to play a puzzle. So the puzzle is going to flip around, and then we're going to pause it and see if you can guess the, the animal that's hiding behind it. Let's go. All right, so we are pausing it right now. And let's see, I think we are in one of our very warm water habitats. And we have, oh yeah, this is one of our tropical habitats. And the animal that we've just investigated has a lot of blue, both the light blue and this dark blue pattern. And also some of this yellow coloration, which is really interesting, kind of a big block of yellow. And you know, sometimes animals, and I'll put this number up again in case you would like to text in your answer. Some of our animals use their colors to kind of like talk to each other, to tell other animals to, um, to stay away. I might, be, I might be small, but this animal here, I'll give you a hint. This animal here is small, but it's actually hiding a little tiny barb on the side of its body. So we wouldn't want to eat it because it has this little thing that would stick out right by, again, I'll give you a hint, this is its tail. So Noah and Hank say, maybe a blue tang. Oh, explorers, are you also guessing? Did you shout some out? All right, let's see what we have here. Nice work! So Nolan and Hank, you did a great job, and I'm sure there are other explorers who are also shouting out their answers and texting in with us today. So if you guessed fish, you're correct. This is a fish, and it's also known as um, a tang, which is a, a special kind of surgeon fish. So they have this little tiny hidden barb right behind its tail here that sticks out. So if something were to try to eat our little friend, it would um, get that barb stuck in its mouth, which would not be good. So 
our little fish here is kind of blending in here, but it wants all the other fish in its habitat to know, don't mess with me, I have a little secret weapon to defend myself. In fact, let's go to our big tropical gallery. I'll have my, man, my friend Amanda put up. We have our camera inside our big tropical habitat, and we'll see if we can find. Now, they're much smaller than some of the other animals, but sometimes we can still see them because of that yellow that's sticking out. And you can see some other animals that are also kind of swimming around in the same home or habitat. So we're going to give it just a second. So this is one of our blue animals. Do you see any other colors of the animals that are, are hiding kind of in the background there? Which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, all right. So I want you to look closely, explorers. Are you looking? Did you put your exploring goggles on? Okay, we're looking in the background here. Oh, I see some blue and some flashes all the way in the back. There we go. Do you see these little flashes in the corner? So they're called blue tangs, palette tangs, powder blue tangs. This fish has many different what we call common names, kind of like nicknames, lots and lots of nicknames. And it kind of depends on where you are living in the world. You might have a different name for this animal in your backyard, which is pretty awesome. We did have a question come in, not related to fish, but still a really good question. And I appreciate explorers that you're asking them. You're thinking like scientists. So Ethan wants to know, what do penguins eat? Hmm, any guesses? You know what? Let's go back to your question. And if anybody else wants to help answer Ethan's question, I think that might be kind of fun. So if you think you know, for Ethan, what a penguin might eat. We'll not only go back to answer your question in just a little bit, but we'll show you one of our penguin cameras and take a peek at our penguins in just a moment. While we are waiting, let's go ahead and pick another color to explore. Ah, pink! I love it! Okay, we're gonna do our puzzle. You ready for this? Okay, explorers, we're gonna show you part of this animal and then we're going to pause it and see if you can guess what kind of animal this is. Oh, this is definitely a pink animal, bright and pink. But wait, look at that. Its home, its habitat is pretty dark. Very different than the, the coral reef habitat. So this home it's actually much colder. The temperature is much colder. And it's an animal that we can find in our own backyard here in Southern California. So right in our ocean off of our coast here, which is pretty cool. So this animal is pink. It has kind of like our palette blue tang that we were just looking at, or that blue tang. It has different shades of the same color. So in the middle here is a nice bright pink color. And on the the sides of it, we can see that it has um, a darker pink. Also similar to our last animal, do you notice it has some things that are the same, even though the colors are different? Yeah, you might notice that it has fins. It has fins on it. So we have this top fin and this tail fin called a caudal fin, and I can kind of see the very top of our animal over here. So if it has fins and it's underwater, do you guess what kind of animal it is? All right, let's go ahead and take a peek. Oh, did you guess fish? Nice work, explorers. Yeah, there are many different kinds a fish out there, and this is called a California sheephead. So I mentioned that it was a fish that we have in our own backyards. Um, we can maybe show you in just a moment our blue cavern habitat. This fish really stands out. It has uh, the nice pink colors. It's been described um, by my friend Amanda as a pink Oreo, and I really like that description. And you can really see this chin here. And if you look closely, it does have a pretty good size tooth just kind of hanging out. It does have, it has a whole mouthful of teeth, but I think it's funny that in this picture, it looks like it has just one tooth at the bottom. Is it kind of a little bit of a goofy look. So this fish um, lives in our kelp forest habitat. And this is a live camera view. So 
Sometimes we see it when we look around, sometimes we don't. We might actually see the, the female in here who's a little bit of a, no, actually, I think right here, it might be sleeping. So some of the fish can actually take little rests in the rocks and the sheephead perches, <laughs> it uses those fins that it had at the bottom of its body to kind of settle in on the rock. And it's really comfortable just sitting here. And it has, I know the, the camera doesn't pick up those nice pink colors, but this stripe down the middle and the dark spots here, I'm pretty sure that this is the, the fish just perched on the, the rock behind us. So it's taking a little nap. I don't, I don't blame the fish. It's about 11 o'clock, maybe a little nap before, uh, before food time. Let's take a look at one more pink animal just to compare. Oh, wow, look. This is a zoomed in look of a little type of clownfish, also known as an anemone fish. And if we're looking closely, we can kind of see it's, we're zoomed in, but this fish here is snuggled into what we call a sea anemone. And the sea anemone has tentacles on it. It's an invertebrate, an animal with no bones. And it has, just like its cousin, the jelly, it has little stinging tentacles, but this fish has a secret. It has a special slime over its body and makes it so it doesn't get stung by these tentacles. And so it uses that sea anemone friend to kind of wiggle into and protect it. So it can take a little fish rest in here, knowing that something will probably not bother it because it's going to have the... Um, if another fish gets too close, it's going to be stung. Uh, so yeah, we have, um, let's go ahead and actually, why don't we go to our penguin cam really quick because we're going to answer Ethan's question. I'm not sure if we had anybody guess. So we'll go ahead and take a, a look at some of our penguins really quick and see if we can guess what a penguin might eat. Now the penguin is a bird and it lives mostly in the water. And that's so it can catch its favorite food. And this is common for, I think, most penguins. There are some penguins who will also eat little shrimp, but most penguins actually eat fish. Ah, here are our Magellanic penguins. And right now they're all getting ready to kind of build their nest and have their, their babies. It's our nesting season. so. Our penguins, they don't live in, um, actually, look, look, this one's building its nest right now. So our penguins don't like living on ice. In fact, they, they're from South America and they build burrows. They will dig into the side of um, the rocks or where the, right underneath where the soil's a little softer, but they have the protection above them of the rocks. Um, they might use the soft sand to dig into. Their burrows can be up to six feet long, which is pretty long. And right now we're giving them little uh, material like palm fronds so they can take their nesting material and put it inside so that they can get ready to have their, their baby. So that's why they're not swimming around the water. That's why they're, they're really close to each other is that they're, um, they have found their, their mates this time of year. It's just pretty cute. And then look at their colors. So they have um, their own colors to, to help them when they're finding their food, um, they're swimming around, they're dark on the top, so they're black on the top and white on the bottom. And so those colors are important for the penguin to help them kind of blend in when they're swimming in the ocean. So good job with that question, Ethan. So they eat fish and they do use their color when they're hunting for their fish or they're making sure they're not, um, they can get away from other animals. <laughs> All right, and then um, Zeke asked, what helps fish breathe? Great question. Maybe we'll go to another picture of a fish, maybe even the fish that we were just looking at, that little clownfish, and take a look. Now, it's, I guess it's a little hard to see, but right around, actually, it's right here. Okay, so uh, Amanda's going to find me another picture. Oh, perfect. Right here. This thing right here is the covering that goes over the fish's gills. And a gill allows a fish to breathe air underwater. So we can't see all the tiny little air bubbles that are floating around, but they're there. 
And the fish have to be able to breathe those tiny little air bubbles. So they have these really cool parts called gills. And so a lot of time they open their mouth when they swim and the water goes through their mouth and over their gills. And that allows them to breathe, which I think is super cool. Now take a deep breath with me. So we're different, right? The air goes in through our mouth and then our lungs help us take the air from, sorry, the oxygen from the air around us. So we're doing the same thing, but we have different parts because we live in different habitats. All right, great questions. I really appreciate those. I'll put up my number one more time on my, on my board here. So if you wanted to join in 562-286-1838, let's go ahead and we are going to, we've looked at a couple different colors and we're seeing some even behind us right now. Um, so I want us to keep thinking about colors, but we're gonna change a little bit and start to look at shapes. Because explorers, if we're learning about ocean animals, not only do they have different colors, but even the animals that we've been exploring so far are different shapes and sizes. And so that's something kind of interesting to look at. Now to help us look at shapes, we've invited my friend Gracie, and we'll see if you can uh, guess what kind of animal Gracie is. Hmm, what kind of animal is Gracie? There she is. What do you think? explorers. Oh, did you guess a whale? Did you shout it out? Yeah, Gracie is a gray whale. And she has offered to take us on a little adventure to see if we can not only um, find new friends in the ocean, but we're going to kind of investigate those new friends. We're going to look at shapes, colors, and we're going to add another sense into our exploration. We're going to listen to see what sounds that those animals make to see if we can learn anything. Now, Gracie, the, the whale, has her own shapes and colors and sounds too. What colors do you notice on Gracie? Hmm. Yeah, you probably noticed that she is gray. That's how she gets her name. And then she kind of has these patches of light gray and white on her. And that's because sometimes whales can get barnacles stuck to them, which are a tiny little animal. Can you imagine having other little animals stuck to you? It doesn't really hurt my friend Gracie, um, but it does make them a little bumpier, <laughs> kind of interesting. So Gracie um, also makes a sound. So we're gonna listen for a little bit and she says hello very different than we say hello. <gasps> Did you hear that? Maybe we'll turn it up just a little bit on our side. Oh, did you hear it? It kind of sounds like boop, 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 boop. That's how Gracie says hello. Yeah, so that sound is how gray whales communicate to each other. And that's really interesting. So Gracie's gonna swim along and she's gonna see if she notices or hears or sees anything. So she's gonna use her senses with us. Hmm. Oh, Gracie, what did we find? What do you think, explorers? What can make that, that really interesting sound? Let's go ahead and take a peek. <gasps> Whoa, we found a little animal. What is that? Is that a whale? No, that's not a whale. That's not like Gracie. Uh, well, let's go ahead and take a peek at this animal. I think we have some clips of this animal and we can see if we notice anything interesting about this animal. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a peek. Oh, we have another picture. So this is, did you guess it? Yeah, it's a jelly, good job. Now we're gonna name that shape. What shape do you see? Can you draw with me? So if you put your imaginary pens out there and you were to draw out this shape, what shape will we draw? There we go. Ah, oh, good job. Did we draw a circle? So this part of a jelly, and I think I have my jelly puppet right there. This part of a jelly right here is called the bell. And this is how they move through the water. Would you like to be a jelly with me? Okay, here we go. Just have to stick your arms up. Okay, and we're gonna move through the water. 
nice and gentle. So today, as you're thinking about our class, you can drift along like a beautiful jelly. Our moon jellies are very graceful. And wait a minute, they not only have this circle shaped to their body, this bell, but look, they have some things hanging off of them. What are those called? Hmm, if I look at my puppet here. There we go. Wow, these are called tentacles. And I think we even have a jelly cam that we can bring up in just a moment. And to show you that there are different kinds of jellies out there. Some of them have this really light color to them, and some of them can be a, a little bit different in their color. But they all have this bell, and they all have tentacles. And these tentacles are really long, so when you do your jelly, you can add, there you go, did you add your, your tentacles? There you go, you can kind of wiggle your fingers with me as you move like a jelly. So these tentacles, for our moon jelly, were a little bit shorter, but look at our sea nettles. This is another camera that we have. So this is happening right now at the aquarium. So we can peek on in and see, explores what our jellies are doing. Look, what color do you notice? Yeah, did you notice that orange color? I think they always look like they have a little light underneath them, like they're lit up. But this is just the color they are. So they're bright orange and they have these long tentacles to help them capture little tiny animals that are drifting around. Well, basically anything that's just drifting around in their ocean home. And again, they use those tentacles um, to help protect themselves. They can sting. So you wouldn't want to give, you know, you wouldn't want to swim up and give a sea jelly a hug. <laughs> they have a way to defend themselves. If you've ever been to the aquarium, uh, we do have a place that you can touch a jelly. And so we have picked out a very special jelly, that moon jelly that we were looking at. And believe it or not, because this jelly eats very tiny things and has very, very tiny stingers, we can touch this jelly and be okay. Our skin is thick. So it really depends on the jelly, which is pretty cool. Wow, this is a great view also of their stomachs. How many stomachs do you have? Probably just one, right? We have one stomach. Our jellies here can have several stomachs. They have one, in this picture, one, two, three, four stomachs. So it's almost lunchtime. Can you imagine having to eat to fill up four stomachs? <laughs> so jellies are constantly kind of stinging and, and bringing food to help fill their stomachs. All right, Gracie, let's see if we can explore a few more animals on our adventure here today. could that be? I wonder. Let's get up close and take a peek, shall we, Gracie? Oh, did we guess together? Did you guess it was a shark? How cool. I love sharks. What's your shark impression? Mine's this. You make a shark with me? Awesome. Look, we've also added our fins on. Wonderful. So as you're thinking about sharks and you're swimming around as a shark today, let's think about the shapes. Ooh, so we found a circle for our last animal. What shapes do you notice? Hmm, what shapes do you see, explorers? Let's go ahead, and I think we can circle some of those shapes or outline. Let's do it together, you ready? Let's take a look. I think I have my own shark plushie that we can use. There we go, ta-da! kind of like our picture, what shape do you see? Yeah, did you see that triangle shape? So this triangle is part of our shark's fins. So all of these parts here are called fins. And look, even in their mouths, they have teeth, right? That are that triangle shape, which is pretty cool. So if you're practicing your drawing, you can draw starting from the very top. Ready? One, two, three. We have those three corners of our triangle, and this helps our shark swim. I think we have some, oh, cool. Thanks, Amanda. We have some great footage. Look at our sharks using their triangle-shaped fins to swim. Oh, hey there, big guy. This is a picture of our sand tiger shark called big guy. Awesome. 
So we have those, tr those triangle shapes here, and those are helping our shark move through the water and also make sure that they don't kind of tip over. Oh, awesome. Look, this is some of our live footage from our shark lagoon. This is a, an animal home at the aquarium. And you can see they have so many triangle shapes all over their bodies. What is your favorite thing about sharks? Hmm, what do you like about sharks? I think I like their shapes. I think I like that they are really graceful as they swim through the water. All right, Gracie, let's see what else you can find on your adventure today. <gasps> click, click, click. I wonder what that could be. Is this a big animal? No, it's a tiny animal. This is, it was a good thing that Gracie was looking closely and making her observation. She might have missed this really tiny animal. What is this animal called? Yeah, did you guess? This is a crab. How did you know it was a crab by looking at it? Did you see anything interesting that made it a crab? How is this animal different than the shark that we were just looking at? Hmm, are they the same shapes and colors? No, they're kind of different, right? And they also have some different parts on them. If we look really closely, we can see that our crab friend here has claws. And these claws are used to help protect the crab and even grab its food. I think we even have some pictures or something else to look at. Oh, cool. So this is a bright red crab. And look at those claws. This is the mouth of our crab friend. And it's a little hard to see, but I think I can point out there's one eye and then there's the other little eye right over here. And so the crab is looking at its food. It looks like it has a little tiny piece of food that it found at the bottom. Now looking at this part on its back, what is this thing called? This is a really hard part. In fact, its whole body is covered in hard parts. This is called its shell. Yeah. And now this shell has a special shape to it. What shape is this? It's not quite a circle. It's like we've stretched that circle out. Let's go ahead and see what shape that is. It's an oval. Yay. So it's like taking your circle and stretching it out. That is the oval shape. Excellent. All right, Gracie, let's go ahead. I think we have just time for maybe one more animal as we explore here. <gasps> Whoa. Wait a minute, Gracie. That, that sounded kind of familiar. Explorers, do you remember what that sound was from earlier? What kind of animal was it? Well, let's find out and see if you're right. <gasps> it was a gray whale. Grace, Gracie's met back up with her family. Well, thank you, Gracie, so much for exploring with us today, showing us some of your animal friends that live in the ocean. That was a lot of fun. So, explorers, I hope you had just as much fun as I did today, exploring the ocean, looking for shapes and colors. Let's see, we found animals that were triangle shapes. We found animals that were circles and ovals. And maybe we'll take one last peek at our Tropical Pacific Gallery and just kind of see if we can find some colors and shapes um, at, right before we go. So I would encourage you, if you have an opportunity, to look at some of our webcams today, maybe a little later today. And just like uh, my friend Amanda is going to pull up for us. Here we go. <laughs> we have a big fish hanging out in front of our camera. Wow, look. We have lots of different shapes. Do you notice any oval? Ooh, we have an oval body here. We have almost a circle body on this side. Do you see any triangles? I do. So yeah, there are lots of shapes and animals. Wow, look at that shark. Come in many different shapes, even our own bodies, right? What shapes do you notice about your own body? Yeah, there are lots. Well, I hope you had fun exploring today and we hope you will join us again for the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. Take care, everyone.